If possible, I would recommend you to view this video together with a friend, explaining to and discussing with each other. In this course, we will look at the few separation methods and learn how to make basic design calculations for separation equipment, including such things as size, area, and energy demand. A lot of research on learning indicates that you understand and remember things better if you try to connect the new knowledge to your previous knowledge. Let us therefore start by making an inventory of your current knowledge on separation processes. Now, separation processes rely on different substances having different chemical and or physical characteristics. But what chemical and physical characteristics do you know that might be used as the basis for separation? And what separation methods are you aware of? I've made a few simple visual aids that might help you list different chemical and physical characteristics. Let's look at them. Now, pause here and list as many separation methods you can think of and the physical and chemical characteristics they rely on. Okay, did the visual aids help you? The characteristics I tried to illustrate were size, charge, weight. Well, I myself actually have a hard time coming up with separation processes that rely on weight directly. Most separation methods rather rely on the density or charge density. The next one is tricky to illustrate, uh, affinity. The tendency for molecules to be attracted to, for example, a hydrophobic surface. Magnetism was perhaps easier for you to guess. Then comes yet another difficult illustration. What I try to illustrate here is diffusivity. That is that small light molecules have a larger diffusivity than big heavy molecules and thus small light molecules spread faster. Uh, on the bottom row, row we have volatility or boiling point, melting point and finally solubility. And here is an incomplete list of separation methods and physical and chemical characteristics they depend on. Now don't take this list as the absolute truth because there are many variants of separation methods and the exact characteristics they depend on might actually vary. Uh, an ugly example of that is chromatography and size exclusion chromatography, which in a sense are two totally different things. Uh, anyway, in separation methods, we essentially want to take a system that is unordered, that is that has a high entropy and transform that into a system that is order, that has lower entropy. What the second law of thermodynamics tells us is that this will cost us. We need to add energy to the system in order to carry out our separation. Now the thermodynamics of the system determines the equilibrium state and what is theoretically possible to achieve using a certain separation method at a given temperature and pressure. Thermodynamic relations also determine the reactivity and stability of the system and its components. However, not all separation processes that are possible from a theoretical standpoint are desirable from an economic or environmental perspective. The mass and heat transfer often determines how fast the separation process will be and hence the required size of the equipment, the energy demand, etc.